the Bristol Blam. What's the history behind it? Find out right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Now today I'm looking at the historical context of this week's kit of the week, which is the Bristol Blenheim Mark IV in 172nd scale from Airfix. So first of all, we'll be having a look at the history of the Bristol Blenheim itself. And then I'll have a look at the history of this Airfix kit and what other kits are available in various scales of the Blenheim from which you can choose. Now, if you have already got one of these and want to know how to build it, that's the next video that's coming up in the series. If you're thinking about getting one, just want to know what you get in the box, that video is already available online. Now, if you want to make sure you catch every one of my future videos, do please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications of all my new releases. And of course, anything you like on the channel, please give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like helps. And if you want to give a bit more concrete support, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by any of my online partner programs, including the FX Affiliate Program. Enough of all of that, let's have a look at the history of the Bristol Blender. The Bristol Blenheim was a twin-engined light bomber and heavy fighter aircraft developed in the 1930s. Its origin was the Bristol Type 142, a civil airliner prototype made in response to a challenge by Lord Rothermere, owner of the Daily Mail newspaper, to produce the fastest airliner in the world. Early tests in 1935 showed a top speed of 307 miles per hour, or 494 kilometers per hour, faster than any RAF fighter of the time, such as the Hawker Fury II and the Gloucester Gladiator. Its potential as a fast bomber was recognised immediately, and the Blenheim Mark I entered service with 114 Squadron RAF in 1937. By the start of the war in 1939, the Blenheim equipped two home and 11 overseas squadrons. The aircraft performed poorly in combat in France in the first year of war, being no match for German fighters. Technology had taken massive leaps since the Blenheim was conceived. Despite this, crews continued combat operations harrying German airfields and supply columns. Blenheims were manufactured under licence by Fairchild in Canada. These were a modified type known as the Bolingbrook. The modification included a longer nose with more room for the bomb aimer and a scooped out area to give the pilot a better view. Back in the UK, this became known as the Blenheim Mark III, and when this was combined with more powerful engines and a twin gun armament for the dorsal turrets, the definitive Mark IV was the result. Some Mark IVs had an additional rear-facing gun turret under the nose. A long-range fighter version of the original design was also produced, known as the Mark IF. It included a ventral four-gun pack and was the first British type to have air interception radar fitted. The Mark IV was also converted to the heavy fighter role as the Mark IV-F, both in convoy protection and night fighter roles. The final version was the Mark V with a more enclosed nose and a gun barbette. A specialist ground attack derivative, the Bristol Bisley, was a Blenheim with a solid nose housing four 0.303 inch machine guns. The Blenheim was used extensively outside of the UK, in the Mediterranean and North Africa, they were used to attack enemy airfields and supply convoys. In service with the Finnish Air Force, they fought in the harsh conditions in the Winter War against invading Soviet Union forces. In the Far East, the Blenheim was instrumental in the defence of India and the recapture of Burma, flying operations against the Japanese. In one action, 28-year-old squadron leader Arthur Scarfe led 62 Squadron to attack a Japanese airfield. The rest of his squadron was put out of action by Japanese fighters soon after takeoff, but Scarf pressed home his attack. 
Having hit the airfield on the way back, he was bounced again by fighters and severely wounded. Despite drifting in and out of consciousness, he was able to make a forced landing back at base, saving the lives of his other two crew. Scarf died shortly afterwards from his wounds. For this action, Scarf was awarded the Victoria Cross. The bravery of crews flying aircraft they knew to be almost obsolete against a determined and well-armed enemy can never be underestimated. Over 4,400 Blenheims of all marks were built. Today, around a dozen or so are kept in museums around the world. One aircraft is airworthy and regularly appears at air shows in the UK and Europe. This FX kit of the Blenheim 4 was released in 2014, the same year as the Blenheim 1 was released as a new tooling. The Blenheim 1 was re-released with new decals in 2016, the Blenheim 4 being re-released with new parts and decals in 2017. The first FX kit of the Blenheim 4, not the Blenheim 1V as shown here, was made in 1968. It went through the usual barrage of rebranding and was last released as part of the Victoria Cross Icons set in 2011. The first kit available of the Blenheim was this Frog Penguin set from all the way back in 1939. It was re-released after the war in 1947. In 1969, Frog released a newer tooling of the Blenheim 4, followed by a Blenheim 1 in a twin box with a Messerschmitt BF-109. This kit was picked up by Hasegawa in 1969, then by Novo, the Nyetsk Toy Factory, Kamatic, Zetius Plastic, and finally in the 1980s by DZI, by which time you can see the moulds are very tired indeed. Hopefully better frog moulds went to Modelcraft in 1994, and to Revel in 1996 for their releases, and they obviously were cleaned up and even repaired. Likewise to Intec, Model Hobby, Air Moulds, and to Eastern Express, who even added winter landing gear to their kit. Frog also released a kit in 1959 in the slightly odd 179th scale, sold in 1964 by Triang. MPM created a new mould of the Blenheim 4 in 172nd in 2000, and this was released as the Mark I in the following year. These were given new parts by Special Hobby as the Mark IV in 2008 and the Mark I in 2010. On to 148th scale now, Classic Airframes released a tuning in 2000 of the Mark I, following it with the Mark IV, and as far as I can tell, uniquely, the Mark V in 2001. The Mark I and Mark IV got new decal releases in 2014 and 2015, respectively. FX released their own 148 scale kit of the Mark I in 2018, with a new decal release in 2020. Sadly, the fuselage design doesn't seem to include an easy transfer to a Mark V, unlike the 172nd scale kit. So there it is. It was a very important aeroplane. Um, still quite understated aircraft, still sort of looked down upon somewhat, but I tell you what, you just can't look down on the bravery of the young people who flew them. Um, amazing. Because let's face it, the Blenheim by 1940, 1941 was essentially outclassed in almost every theatre it appeared in. These people still got in them day after day, took off, went on, did their job, and hopefully came back. An awful lot of them didn't. That takes a lot of guts. Anyway, um, do come back for the build video. So I'll be building the uh, Blenheim here. And still haven't really decided what colours to do it in, but you'll see when the build video comes up. If you want to know when the video comes up, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet and hit that bell and you'll be notified of all of my future builds. And if you like anything you see on my channel, please do remember, Imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like helps. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again very soon. Take very good care now and goodbye.